Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Augusto the Dog Trainer and happy Thanksgiving to all my subscribers. And if you are new to my channel, happy Thanksgiving to you as well and consider subscribing. Are you ready for some dog training time? Because today I'm going to be going over how I move on from basic, from the basics with my young puppies to more advanced obedience. And I am going to demonstrate to you guys during that very first advanced obedience training for real life dog training. This is for when you want your dog to be well behaved regardless of where you are at and regardless of whether you have treats or any type of reward to entice them to obey you. This is to get your dog to listen to you at any given time and place with any types of distractions. The puppies in this video are six months old and younger and one adult dog that I am using as a helper here to demonstrate to the puppies what I expect from them. Now, these puppies have the very basics in obedience training and they are also very well socialized. Let's get started with more advanced training now. So the first thing that I'm showing you guys is how hard it is to walk them on a leash because they aren't trained yet. And one of the hardest thing about raising more than one puppy at once that are of the same age is leash training for pack walking because they like to move around, switch sides and get me all wrapped around in the leashes when, you know, my trained dogs are super easy to walk because of how they're trained. But in order to get there, I got to put all the hard work that it takes. Adding one dog to a pack of dogs that is already trained is not a big deal. But training three of them at the same time when they have no idea what you expect from them, it is very hard. And I don't have time to do one at a time because they're all growing so fast and I need them to learn to walk together as a pack. So I'd rather put in the extra work that it takes. As you guys see here, I'm constantly redirecting them in the same position that I want them to be in. So every time they go in front of me, they go a little bit too far ahead. As you see here, I'm going to redirect them before we continue walking. I'll position them. And then once they are in that position, I will slowly try to walk with them. Now, there's going to be a lot of repetition and repetition and repetition because again, them being so young and not trained, they will repeat that behavior over and over again. And also, especially because they are still too young for my training collars that I'm going to be switching to. So far, they just have regular collars on with regular leashes attached to them. But as they get a little bit older, probably within the next two months, and this depends on each particular puppy. So for my puppies, in about two months, I'm going to be switching them to a prone collar to then fine tune the perfect leash walk. But for now, I have to struggle with the regular collar and leash to get them to walk as close to me as possible for as long as possible. But again, I'm not super pushy with them at this age because they are still young. Then I position them in a down, and this is the very first time for two of them. Owen, of course, is trained, and then I have a Rihanna next to him that you guys can barely see, but she had one lesson with this before, and she did perfect today for her second training. Now, uh, Tina and Bianca are practicing this for the very first time. So you see me here trying to position them to sit and down, not using any treats because I already know that they can do it with treats and if we're at home or not around a lot of distractions. Now we are in a dog park with a lot of other dogs and I'm reinforcing that they sit, lay down and stay down without using treats. I'm going to do a close up of how I get them to respond to commands that they already know, but that they don't know how to listen to without treats or without them wanting to, meaning they have other things that are getting their attentions and other distractions. Now, with the methods that I'm going to show you guys here in a close-up very soon, you can get your dog to stay down even with distractions and other dogs coming around them and trying to interact with them like this because I can basically reinforce the down. I can, I can, you know, remind them that they need to stay down. And you see me kind of just watching them and walking around. And every time one of them pops up, I go right to them and I redirect them back to a down position. And I keep reinforcing it whenever I need to. Yeah, I have a bunch. 
Now here is a great example of how you have to stop whatever you're doing and redirect to your, back to your puppy if you need to redirect them. So I stopped the conversation for a second and I went back to redirecting my puppy because she had moved. If you're not very consistent, your dog is not going to be very obedient. That's just how it works. Body, yaddy, yaddy. When the puppies got a little bit better with staying down, again, this is their very first training section and they only have Owen as an example and then Ariana had one lesson before. I'm going to start using myself as a distraction. So what you guys see me doing here is purposely running around because dogs and puppies like to follow things that move. But what I got to teach them is to not follow everything that moves because that's not what we want them to do. We want them to be able to stay in a down and ignore things that are moving. And unless I'm calling them even to follow myself, I don't want them to follow me unless I'm calling them to do so. Now I'm using myself as a distraction and going back to continue to redirect and reinforce a good solid down. So the only two that gave me any trouble today was Athena and Bianca because like I said, this was the very first time. And what I'm showing you guys here is that basically whenever they move from a down position that they already know what down means. But of course, they are learning from the first time for the first time that they need to stay in that position. So the way that I'm teaching them that is that basically there's a consequence for moving. Of course, they don't understand it quite yet. Why? And the consequence is very gentle and mild, but it is a little bit annoying and uncomfortable. That's the best way to describe it. So by making that a little annoying and uncomfortable, they are not going to want to do that again. So basically, every time they are moving from a down position, it is becoming a little uncomfortable for them. And once they stay down, it is the most comfortable and relaxed for them. And they also get reordered for it. Now, you see Athena here, she's trying to lay flat on the ground, basically on her side, asking to get petted instead of laying down correctly. And when they do that, I do not engage with them. And I just kind of like apply a little bit of pressure and redirect them forward just to get them to lay down correctly. And it's just a way to teach them that, you know, time to play is time to play and time to work is time to work. So if I tell them to lay down and I'm redirecting them and they don't know what to do with themselves at first, sometimes they try to roll over and lay on their backs. And you don't want them to do that because you want a reliable down command. So it's more of a serious type of training. This is something that I'm going to be able to rely on if I'm ever in a really busy place with my dogs or in a serious place where they have to be well behaved, such as like a service dog, such as if I take them, you know, in a public establishment or I fly with my dog or I go to a friend's house. I don't want them to be like always skirmy, you know, I want them to be really calm and obedient and be able to lay down and contain themselves. See, she's trying to do that again. And you see that I do not engage with that. It, it is not cute and it's not funny. I mean, I know actually it is, but for what I want to accomplish with them in the long run, it is not cute because this would be a huge distraction. And you basically teach her that that is the right thing to do to avoid actually listening to the commands that I'm giving her. That is why it is so important to not let them get away with that during training. If you're at home and your puppy is being cute and to going on their backs and getting petted, it's completely different. I'm going to redirect Owen because there's a lot of dogs coming close to us right now. And when dogs are being naughty and rambunctious around us, it is still a distraction. So for any dog, this is a huge level of distraction with all these dogs now coming around us and new dogs that we don't even know. My dogs all remained down. They did really good. The owners removed the dogs, which I don't care. Obviously, I'm in the middle of a park. I'm not expecting people to keep the dogs away from me. I'm actually using their dogs as distractions for my training to make my dogs better and better each time. This is the first time and they did not care about all the dogs, which is because they are so well socialized and exposed to other dogs that it, it is not a big deal to them to have dogs come up to us. Now, me running around, on the other hand, is actually a bigger distraction than other dogs currently because my puppies are trained to follow me every time I run and every time I move. So it is very confusing to them why I don't want them to do so. And how else would I explain it to them other than by having 
a consequence whenever they do move. Now, I know that there are other methods. I know you can use positive, re positive reinforcement to teach this, but I do not find that method to be as effective in the long run with higher level of distractions, especially when I'm going to be doing this with six to seven dogs at once, as you guys have seen with many of my other videos with my already trained dogs. So I'm keeping all of that in mind when I'm training my dogs. And this is not my only method. This is, that is not the only way that I know how to train, but it is 100% certainly the most effective method to have the dogs to be as reliable as you guys see in my already trained dogs, and especially for me to be able to count on them in a pack setting with so many dogs, young dogs, you know, they are trained to behave with all types of distractions. I, uh, I'm very confident with my methods, and uh, trust me, if there was another method that was easier or more effective, I would be using it. I'm very open-minded to all methods. I have tried them, and I have experience with many of other trainers, and even though you can accomplish this training using all the methods, it will be nearly impossible having a whole pack of dogs and getting them to this level that I want, that I haven't really seen other trainers do yet, which is when I walk my dogs off leash in huge crowds in a whole pack. You know, it is something that I do and this is how I accomplish it. And I'm just sharing with you guys today so you know how my puppies are being trained. Because when you see them next year, I want you guys to be fully aware of how they have been trained. This is actually the first time that I'm raising the whole pack from puppyhood. So a lot of my previous packs that I have done videos with were dogs that all came to me already full grown and with zero training. And then maybe one dog in each pack that was raised by me. This time around, I'm raising all of them besides Owen that actually was a little harder to train because he was very rambunctious when I got him and very puppy-like at already a as a big dog, you know, he was already, already 14 months, but very rambunctious with zero training. So I had to do extra work to get him to this level, but I still find that it is not the same as me raising them right from the beginning. As soon as the puppies understood what I wanted from them, which was to stay down with me running around them, I started to add a new level of distraction, which is the ball. All of them are getting more and more interested in the ball lately, especially Bianca, the youngest one. She is the most driven one for the ball. And so every time the ball moves, her instinct is to chase it because I have been letting her. This is the very first time that I basically interrupted her from trying to chase the ball to teach her to stay. And you guys will see how quickly she picked up that I wanted her to stay. Obviously, because this is the first time and myself running around was the very first distraction to them, it was a little bit harder to teach them that. Everything else, every new distraction from this point on is just going to be easier and easier and easier. And this means, you know, I'm using the ball and you see she's already staying and doing very well from just two corrections because she remembers from the previous practice that we just did here with me running around that this is what I expect from her. So just because I added a new distraction doesn't mean that the training is over. Is what she's basically learning right now. Now, if another dog gets in a fight or another dog chases the ball or a little kid comes running and is all excited or whatever distraction may be, she will know to stay down because we're practicing around so many different distractions. And we're going to continue to add more and more distractions as we go along. Now, when you see, when I make it a little more tempting, she will forget a little bit. And she did great because she actually is not tied. These dogs are not tied to each other. All the leashes are loose. So they're being trained individually. They're just being basically placed next to each other. But you see the leashes are not attached to each other. So although she got up because of the level of distraction that the ball was so close to her, she did not attempt to go for it like she did the first time. So that was much, much better. Now, once I'm done practicing for a little bit, I'm going to now get them to move again. And I'll put them in a heel position. So I'll call them to heel. And again, I have to position all of them in the same position. So right now, my goal is to have Owen and then Ariana, Bianca, and then Athena at the very end. Athena so far is being the hardest one to keep her in that position because she likes to be closer to me. And so it's really hard to try to keep her on the far left. 
But with a lot of repetition, you guys will see that she will get there. Uh, and then Bianca, because she is younger, she doesn't move quite as fast as the other one. So she, sometimes she's a little bit behind and I have to give her a little push. But again, I'm taking this type of training right here very slow because it's something that's going to come with time. Give it until they get to be about eight months old and I switch the colors and that will be like night and day difference because everything else is already been done. They have a really good foundation. They are very well socialized. They do not have any type of bad habit. They don't bark at anything. They don't jump up on people. They don't run up to people or other dogs. They only play with them when they the dog invites them to play with them. Um, they don't chew anything. They don't bite on the leashes. So they're very well managed and stable. It's just a matter of teaching them new things now, which is like a piece of cake for me. So keep following us along. Make sure you follow us on Instagram and subscribe to this channel to continue to watch the puppies growing. Now, if you guys want more videos like this, and if you find this helpful, definitely let me know in the comments below. I would like to be making more videos, but sometimes I find these videos boring for me because I do it all the time. And I understand um, that it may be different for, different for you guys. You see me again redirecting them. It's a very constant process of redirecting, redirecting over and over again. You can see me doing a little pop on the leash to just kind of remind them that I want them to stay. When Athena moved, I completely stopped and I repositioned her on the far left. This can be a lot of work, but it is mostly because I'm doing three puppies at once. It's a lot of work to be redirecting, you know, one after the other because they're all untrained. If I had only one, it'd be so much easier. But it's been, a, it's a lot of uh, physical effort for me as well because I have to keep redirecting them. Now I put them all in a position, a sitting position. I'm going to be releasing them now. Now, Ariane is going to a stage where she's challenging me a little bit because she's getting a little confused. So what I'm trying to do here is getting her to come to me. I first called her because she kind of took off too fast after I released her from the leash. And so she wouldn't come. And when I tried to get her, she just flopped down because she maybe she thought I wanted her to lay down. But I needed her to come to me. So what I did in this case is I put a leash around her neck. And then I reinforce that when I say come, she has to come to me. And I do that by doing a little pop on the leash. And obviously with the leash, it can reinforce to get your puppy to move. And without the leash, and if she just lays there and she uses her weight against you, it can be really hard to reinforce it. It's very important to not let them win in that situation because they are already confused to begin with. And if you let them win, they're never going to learn the right way. She's learning now that when I call her and she lays down, I'm going to reinforce it. And my way of reinforcing it is by putting a leash on her and making sure that she moves. Now I'm going to show you how I get my puppies to be very interested in following me all the time. Obviously, these already know that and I 100% trust them to follow me everywhere, even with any level of distractions. There's been so far nothing that gets their attention more than me. But what you see me doing here is what I do with young puppies or any new dogs that I get. I never stay still. I don't overcall them. I put them in an environment that I don't have to worry about um, them getting hurt, like obviously nothing near traffic or anything. And then what I do is I basically just keep moving away from them a lot and making myself more excitable. So make yourself exciting. Make you like the center of the attention. There are things that you can do that will naturally get your puppy's attention. So like clapping, just being like, just be excitable and use a lot of body language. And when you get their attention, move around. The more you move around, the more they'll be interested in following you. Because like I said, puppies naturally like to follow things that move. Now, what I do here is, is I just call it Athena. They already have very reliable commands. So I basically just call them whenever I need if they get distracted with something, which happens very rarely. But I do a lot of this moving around. See, when they get to me, instead of me letting them move away from me, I move away from them first. If you get a new young puppy, this is the best thing you can do to have them to be very reliable off leash and always pay attention to you. We ended the day with a photo shoot of my whole black pack of German Shepherds, which you guys can see on my Instagram. As soon as I get the photos back, I'll be posting them there. We're trying to get uh, lots of photos of them as they grow. And then after that, we had uh, swimming in the pool. And that was about it for the day. Make sure you guys subscribe to my channel. Let me know all your thoughts in the comments below. I'll be reading you guys' comments and using them for my next video. Bye, everybody. Love you all. Happy Thanksgiving again. Oh, so you thought I forgot about the close-up of this method that I use. Think again. Oh, wait. I did. I did. I did forget. But I don't want to let you guys down. So 
I am filming again and I'm adding this to the end of this video so it's not really quite goodbye yet I want to show you guys here how I use this method to get my puppy's attention so watch closely how I just pinch her leg a little bit and then I tap on the ground after they already know down so this is a puppy that I already know to lay down on command with treats or even with guidance without distractions but when I add distractions it's kind of harder to get their attention so this method right here is very effective as you see so now she actually becomes more responsive even though we are at the park and there are other distractions you see that she responds right away with my signal for her to lay down and when she, and if for any reason she doesn't I can reinforce it with that little pinch almost like a grabbing on the leg it's a little almost like a nibble on the leg like a little bite with your fingers like this and you watch how she just goes down it's just a very very effective method that i use with puppies and dogs after i taught them how to lay down to be able to reinforce it i'm going to show you guys with bianca this is the first day of her doing this so again i give her that chance to think about it and i'm doing that with athena now a little pinch on a leg and then the other leg and i do it again and then boom they go down so it's a very effective way to reinforce a down i hope you guys learn and enjoy this video now for real goodbye